So this is Ryan Willis. He works at Endurance International. Hi, everybody. Hi. This is Beginner React. If you Hi. want to be in the experience group, you're in the wrong room, go in the other room. And go ahead, Ryan. Thanks. All right, guys. So today, I'm going to be presenting on the do's and don'ts of React development. And this is geared toward beginners, so if you think that these opinions of mine should not be objective, that's OK. You can think of them as subjective. All right, let's get started. A little bit about me. Um, I've been writing single page apps since early 2015. Mostly in React. I've done a bit of Angular, a bit of Vue. Um, I'm currently employed as a full stack developer in Endurance, which is pretty great. This thing. Um, and Ardbeg Scotch Whiskey is like the best. <laughs> also, I haven't done a presentation in front of a bunch of people in like a long time. So <laughs> forgive me if I'm like really shaky and I stutter a lot. But anyways, we got some dudes for you. Yeah. <laughs> so the first one is read the documentation. And I cannot stress this one enough. That's why it's number one. Um, reading the materials that the people that wrote the software wrote also. Yeah. Um, is like really, really, really important. And what um, I usually see when people start off learning React is they start off great. They're visiting the website, they're following the tutorials, they get a quick and dirty understanding of what it's about, and then they go off to write the React app, right? What I don't see a lot of is people coming back to the documentation when they get stuck with something or if they need additional clarification or something like that. Um, to demonstrate the usefulness, of thoroughly reading the docs. I'm going to give you an example where reading the docs might have helped beforehand. So, just by looking at this code here, you ask me what it does. So we got a small button with a number on it, and when the button is clicked, the number increases by one. Now when we run this code, when we click the button, we're going to notice something in the console. Okay? Um, the number that shows up there is going to be one less than what we expect it to be, because there's this nifty little thing about set state um, that we would have known if we found the docs. So, to the docs. Um, they've got this nifty definition here that says that it doesn't immediately update the component. Sometimes it's queued or sent to a batch processor or, or whatever. So it makes reading the state um, immediately after setting it sometimes not work. So what you can do is you can pass a callback, which is guaranteed to fire after the update has been applied. So this culprit right here just has to change to this guy. So throw in the code inside of callback and then it will log properly. So there's your first do. Second do is to very, very closely know the component lifecycle methods. Like you need to know the ins and outs, all of it. Um, like I said, it's foundational to working React. Um, knowing exactly why, when, and where to use them is very crucial. And uh, I recently had someone come up to me asking if I could explain the differences between component low mount and component did mount, and he's in the room, I'm not going to say who he is. Hey, Ryan, can I interrupt you real quick? Yeah. So, are you able to record right now? Are you recording somehow? I'm recording. No. She's recording. Assuming that that's actually recording. Okay, gotcha. So, when people present, I want to make sure that the presentation is valuable for them. Like, he's donating our time, he did a lot of it. So, I want to make sure that this is something that you can tell people in the future that you didn't show this off. So yeah. if you want, you can use um, QuickTime. Have you ever done that before? Okay, gotcha. Um, yeah, I just want to make sure that all our presenters you know that this is valuable to them. So sorry to interrupt, but that's okay. Cool. Thanks. Anyways, um, the answer to that question is in the documentation. So you can just go there and find out exactly what you need. But if you say something like, hey, Ryan, it's so much easier having someone else just explain it to me. I'm just going to say, challenge yourself, improve those critical reading skills, um, dedicate yourself to putting in the work required to fully understand the concept independently, and help in the long run, especially when you don't have people around you that are going to know more. You do. You're going to have to look up yourself. All right, uh, number three is do those tutorials, man. All of them. It actually really helps if you take like a class on it, too, because you get to see a different perspective a lot of times. Sometimes the tutorials that are online are really basic. They don't really flesh out um, like exactly what the person doing the tutorial is trying to convey. 
Um, so if you give yourself a diverse source of material to refer to, I guess, um, it just gives you a finer understanding of the library. Now some are going to be good, some are going to be bad. You're going to learn a lot, especially like you'll be able to like weed out the different tutorials that aren't so good. Maybe you can help other people. Don't do this one. Don't do this one. It's a little better. Uh, now it's time for the don'ts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, don't number one is use DOM selectors. Um, this guy, it's not really super important that you don't use these. It's just kind of like a React anti-pattern to use DOM selectors in general. Um, and the React documentation gives you excellent examples of how to get around this in a way. It's not really getting around, it's more like following the React way. Um, I'm gonna give you an example of it here. So naturally, for someone coming from a a general JavaScript background would try to do something like this um, <clears throat> to focus an input element when the page renders. So for those of you who have used like jQuery, you do like the document ready. As soon as it's there, you select your component or now you're component your element and you do a dot focus on it, right? So that's what you'd be trying to do up here. And the React way to do it is to do this thing called a ref, or it's like a ref callback. It just makes gives your component a reference to the element itself, so you can call it by just doing like this or whatever. It really just depends on what you want to do with that. All right, number two, don't mix React with other libraries. Now this one, I do need to clarify a bit. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing to use other libraries. In fact, it's a very good thing in many cases, most cases actually. I'm saying that as a beginner, you should avoid trying to integrate them because you're still in the process of learning React, so what I'm suggesting. So you're starting out, write pure React apps, and don't like use jQuery, Bootstrap materials with it. Get a thorough understanding of React before you start integrating. And um, <clears throat> Facebook, again, with their documentation, they have an excellent guide on how to integrate it with other libraries. So I suggest you, again, read the documentation. And last one is don't use React for every project. Like if you, <laughs> are working for a company and they're not using React and you really, really want to use React, but the best thing to do there would just be to use whatever platform they're currently using. That's your best bet. Um, it's not like the God solution to like everything. It's not going to work like everywhere. So just because it's been widely adopted doesn't make it great. You guys make it great with what you put on it and what you do with it and stuff like that. You can kind of think of React as like a stage. Um, it gives you a solid platform to produce something, but it's up to you to do the rest, that kind of thing. There's also no guarantee that React is going to be like the de facto standard going forward, so like broaden your horizons now as you're learning. Um, so just like people from a bunch of different sources. But um, that's it. If you guys want to see these slides again for some reason, you can go to, <laughs> <laughs> you can go to my website, rowan.ronwills.net slash react, and that's all we got. Can we ask questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, you said don't use other libraries and stuff like Bootstrap or when stuff you're while you're learning, learning right? Yeah. What about something that's like built specifically for React, like React Router or uh, like React Bootstrap? Um, I would say like if a tutorial is teaching you uh, how to write a single page application and they're using another library, go on, go ahead and do that because that's what they're doing it. But um, unless you have a specific need for a certain project, I would say don't try to jump into that. Learn everything you can about React itself before going into the add-ons and plugins type, type field. Because when you have a thorough understanding of React, those will all know that much easier when you have that foundational knowledge. Yeah. Anybody else? All right, cool. Thanks, Ryan. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. All right, who's next?